Hi, I'm Corey Nockreiner, and you're watching WatchGuard Security Week in Review, a weekly video podcast dedicated to quickly summarizing all the information and network security stories each week. Let's jump right in and talk about the week starting February 13th. This week was the week of patches. Microsoft Patch Day falls on the second Tuesday of every month, and many other security vendors kind of share the same patch day as Microsoft. So there's many, many different software packages that receive security updates this week that you ought to go and apply. First of all, Microsoft released a number of patches. They released nine bulletins covering products like Windows, Internet Explorer, uh, their .NET framework, and various Office packages like the SharePoint servers and Visio. Uh, so if you're a Microsoft user and you use any of those products, you should definitely go out there and apply some of those patches. Adobe also shares Microsoft Patch Day. Uh, during the patch day, they released a new uh, Shockwave update that fixes many security vulnerabilities in Shockwave, and the day after they released a flash update that not only fixes seven flash vulnerabilities, but fixes specifically one, which is a cross-site scripting vulnerability that attackers are currently actually exploiting in the wild. Uh, right now, Adobe vulnerabilities are very, very popular among attackers for drive-by downloads, as well as Java vulnerabilities, which brings me to another big patch. This week, Oracle released a new Java update. So it's very likely if you use a web browser, you're using both Flash, Java, and maybe Shockwave. So be sure to update all of those packages. Finally, I keep on mentioning Chrome updates every week, but Chrome, or Google, yet again released another Chrome update. This update is mostly to include some of those Flash updates that Adobe releases. Chrome packages Flash with the browser itself. So to get the latest Flash updates, you have to update Chrome as well. So make sure to go out and get all those updates. Besides patching, if you have a next generation firewall or a UTM appliance like one of WatchGuard's XTM appliances, it contains many security services such as AV or intrusion prevention that can sometimes protect you from attackers trying to leverage some of these vulnerabilities I'm talking about. At WatchGuard, we still recommend you patch the software to completely fix the problem, but having one of these devices can help you during your vulnerability window, the time between between uh, when we learn about a vulnerability and you actually patch it. So make sure you have defense in depth and use appliances like ours to protect your network. Another big story this week is two independent research groups released information showing a new cryptographical weakness in the algorithms and techniques we use to make uh, SSL or HTTPS public keys, which are used to protect secure web traffic, such as online banking traffic or shopping traffic. Uh, both these groups found there was a problem in how we generated this these keys, which leads to uh, either two or four in every thousand of these keys being actually totally worthless as far as securing traffic. I won't go into any technical or mathematical details about how they found this weakness, but I will say it has to do with how you generate pseudo-random numbers on computing devices. If you'd like more details on these problems, make sure to check out the URLs I'll post in the reference section of this week's WatchGuard Security Center and Review. As far as what to do, there's no reason to panic yet. While uh, they have found some weaknesses in some of our algorithms, I suspect that the people that generate keys will start to take care of this now that they know about it. And this is a pretty normal process with cryptographic algorithms. When we make them, they're pretty strong. Over time, researchers find problems with them, and eventually the industry replaces them with stronger algorithms. There is yet another big breach story that came out this week. Uh, the Wall Street Journal released an article saying that Nortel, an old telecommunications company, had actually been breached by what's suspected to be Chinese-based attackers 10 years ago, and their network had been breached and was breached for over a decade. And during this time, uh, the Wall Street Journal said these attackers were stealing a bunch of intellectual property from Nortel. The details of this breach haven't been disclosed in any way. It comes from some internal ex-employee of Nortel who, who shared this information with the Wall Street Journal. So we don't know all the details, but we're starting to learn many, many big companies may have been breached for long periods of time, and it harkens back 
back to a prediction I made last year which talked about how we have to start protecting intellectual property. It's become being very, very uh, obvious that there are certain attacking organizations and maybe even governments that are going after intellectual property in their attacks. So it uh, points to the need for very strong data leakage prevention technologies like maybe what our XCS offers and focusing those technologies on our intellectual property. Another story that started brewing last week and surfaced this week is the fact that many mobile apps, especially iOS apps, have been leaking user, private user information. This started previously when an app that I believe was called Path was found to actually leak your entire contact list to the app developer. But over this week, we also found applications like Twitter would, would not only take your address book, but the, the Twitter people would store it for up to 18 months. And various other applications were also leaking information like your address book to these app makers. This caused uh, the US government to actually query Apple on why these applications are leaking private data as well as caused Apple to actually publicly uh, change some of their policies and say they'll no longer allow apps to, to, to share this data with the app makers. So the moral of the story is if you have a mobile device, you should be very aware of the data you put on it and know that some of the apps may be, be sharing that data with the app makers. But hopefully all the mobile providers will start to create controls to let you know when your data is being shared with others. Finally, it seems like a week doesn't go by that there's not another anonymous story. And unfortunately, there were four this particular week. Uh, so at the beginning of the week, more, more specifically over the weekend, we learned that Anonymous had actually DDoSed the CIA's website and took it down. Uh, they were able to prevent people from getting to the site for a long period of time, and then the site went down and, and didn't come back for a while. Besides the DDoS against the CIA site, also during this week they did the same type of DDoS attack against the NASDAQ site. On top of that, another Anonymous related group claimed to have uh, DDoSed a weapons manufacturer in the U.S. called Combined Systems. Uh, one of the things they make is tear gas, apparently. Uh, so they were able to DDoS that organization's site as well as steal some data from that site. Another big story that we're not sure if it's a prank or a real thing is this week on Pastebin, Anonymous released, or someone related to Anonymous, uh, pretended to release a story about how on March 31st they're going to do Operation Global Blackout where they're going to target all the root DNS servers on the internet and try to shut down the internet for a few hours or a few days or whatever. Now many people suspect this isn't really possible. Uh, while Anonymous talks about the 13 root DNS servers, if you really know how DNS works, there's actually hundreds of different DNS servers out there. They're all at different locations, so it would be very, very very difficult to pull off this sort of attack. On top of this, uh, Anonymous says they're going to do this on March 31st, which is very close to April 1st, so some suspect this is actually an April Fool's Day prank. So that's it for this week's WatchGuard Security Week in Review. If you'd like more daily security updates, be sure to check me out on Twitter. I'm at SecAdept. And of course, follow us on the WatchGuard Security Center blog. Don't forget you can subscribe to this blog with FeedBurner. Finally, if you have any comments about these podcasts, be sure to send them to me either at my Twitter alias or on the email address in this particular blog post. As usual, thanks for watching, and at WatchGuard, we're rooting for you.